everybody, this is uh, Jim at SP500Chart.com. It's a little bit after 7 o'clock on Sunday evening, December 18th. We're going to take a look at the uh, chart, the S&P 500, as of the close on December 16th, Friday. After I remind you, the website and the video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's take a look. Something we don't do very often, but sometimes we do on a, uh, on a weekend video, is we look at a long-range chart uh, where each candle on the chart is one week. So, what does that mean? Well, you know what a candle is. That's each one of these vertical elements, green or red, solid body or with these little tails. And uh, if you don't know how to read these, it's, I, I, I would suggest you, you, you uh, get... Um, kind of get a little background on them because it's interesting. Um, what, what's interesting in this chart is you'll see we had, for example, back in September and October, we had these long tails. And what that means is that was a week that started up in this area, made a trip down to a low, and then rallied uh, at some point after that low came in. And we end up with, a, with a, a, an object in candles uh, that's called a hammer. This is a hammer, this is a hammer, this is a hammer, this is a hammer. And you see how those hammers um, lined up nicely with those bottoms. It showed that there was strong buying interest that was coming in at, at where these lows were and that the recovery from that level was swift. Another interesting thing to note is that a lot of times just before we start to see a top begin to turn over, we will see a little spinning top and that is uh, is like this little uh, uh, pattern right here 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 sometimes the people will, will call them other things uh, here here and this is a sign of indecision in the markets that what was taking place prior to the formation of that has come to a halt and now you're just kind of suspended right here you see it here, and here it happened before um, some selling. Here it happened before some selling. And now, what are we looking at for this past week? Yes, you almost can't see it. Let me zoom in. That is a candle. For the week, the S&P 500 was down 0.06%. The important thing is, is that the uh, is that is that we were unable to follow through after that nice big green gain from the prior week. Now, with that in mind, looking at that weekly candle, that seems to indicate that we are very near some resistance. Now, let's back out to a daily chart. And once we get here, let me back out and we'll look at this channel. Here's a support line. Here's a resistance line. Well, yeah, it looks like we're near resistance. And if we zoom in a little bit more, you can see that one of the things that we talked about this past week and last weekend was the formation of this uh, pattern right here which instead of being a rising wedge was actually a rising broadening pattern. That, um, and we, we talked about this some also uh, about a week ago, that broadening pattern is indicative of emotional buying or panic covering, you name it, short covering. It's, it's indicative, however, of a, a, a strong move that at some point in time has to reverse because there's just not enough buying energy in the market to keep that broadening pattern alive for very long. Does that make sense? In other words, at some point as it gets broader and broader and as the gains get more, 
um, there will be significant selling pressure to break through that bottom support line and that happened this past week. Now on Wednesday and Thursday we closed uh, less than 1% underneath this line. On Friday we closed at what uh, 2257 and that line was at 2277. So now we're right at about that 1% area. Um, so it will be interesting to see what happens going forth. Um, if we continue uh, to, to sell off a bit, there's a possibility that we could be uh, finding su support at this lower line here. I'm going to change the color of that to make it match my top line. We'll make that um, blue. And we didn't quite reach this uh, top line up here. Hey, well, let me just extend that on out. We didn't quite reach the top here. And um, I'm going to make that darker so we have kind of corresponding channels uh, to look at here. If we back out just a bit, come to me, there is that line. Um, it moved a little bit when I when I backed out to that view. Let's let's go to this one, and there it still still moved just a little bit. But as I as I put that in a little bit better position, based upon our lows here and here, there you have it. So are we in a rising channel with this uh, being actually part of an even larger rising channel? If so. And again, remember this, this green channel right here. If so, then this channel that took us from the lows right around election time to the uh, new all-time highs this past week, um, it would not surprise me if this week we see this break. And why? Well, because again, if this is a channel line that is truly indicative of what's going on in the market, then having come this close to it, um, you would think that it's time, if this channel is a good call, you would think it's, it's about time to see some selling. Uh, the, the question here will be, would we get a solid touch on this line? Well, it's possible. We could break this line. Uh, this week at some point and then get a back test and have that back test come up for a clear tag on our top line here and then at that point then we would know this is this is now a back tested uh, broken channel again rising at a very impressive annualized rate of return of about 81 percent if this breaks and then we back test I would say that would be a, a an extremely high probability of a of an intermediate top being found um, up around oh 20 in the 2290s just under 2300 and you could see how again in the in the uh, bigger picture how that would make sense now the large pattern that is I think of the most importance is still this inverted head and shoulders pattern. Here it is again. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, breakout, pullback, resumption of the move, and we have a target from this pattern of about just a little bit under 2470. That is a minimum target, by the way. Um, they will exceed. As, as a matter of fact, if we go back to an eight-day chart, and, well, actually, I think I can probably bring it up on a Let's see if a six day, yeah. We had an inverted head and shoulders back here in 2008 and 2009. When you measured that pattern, it had a minimum target of 1340. Well, here we are at 2258. That got exceeded. This little inverted shed, head and shoulders pattern right here that, that, that formed in the spring and summer of 2010, it had a target that was exceeded. This inverted head and shoulders pattern had a target it was exceeded. Now we have this inverted head and shoulders pattern and it, it would not be unlikely 
uh, given the strength of this market, that we could exceed that. But when you look at one of these patterns, you have to realize that the target that is the high probability target is measured from the size of the pattern. So we take the depth of this inverted head and shoulders at its deepest point at the formation of the inverted head. We measure that. We go to where we broke out, which in this case it really doesn't matter that much because this line is almost uh, uh, parallel. If, if this were running strongly uphill, or not strongly, if this were running uphill or downhill, then getting that breakout level is very important. But in this case, it's not extremely important because this is almost a flat line. And that's where we get our target up uh, around uh, 2270 or so. So this week, what am I looking for? Well, fr quite frankly, I'm looking for, uh, for the possibility of some weakness and with that weakness, however, uh, it would first be evidenced by a breaking of, I, gotta, I have to move this line back now because um, I'm looking at things again on a 30-minute chart, and that's where this line was originally drawn, so allow me to adjust that. There we now have it in its proper position, and this, um, this lower line, if it breaks, we could see a back test and then getting up to this green line. You'll notice that right now it looks like this green line got tagged. But if we go back on this chart, you will see that uh, it actually has not been hit quite yet. We, if we zoom in on it on the daily chart, you can see we got very close. Well, you know, actually a little closer than I thought. Uh, unfortunately, when you zoom in and out, uh, of, of these charts, sometimes these lines move just a bit, so I don't know, that may, that may, I may have to eat my words, that may be close enough to say that's a, that's a touch, so if that's the case, uh, I would expect, I would expect some weakness in, in the week or weeks ahead. Now, famous last words, here's the deal, if I'm wrong when I say that, and we blow out over the top of this resistance line, that actually gives me, personally, you'll have to make up your own mind, but that would give me a little bit more concern about the health of the market than had we uh, backed up from this point and stayed in this channel. Again, this channel is rising at almost the exact same rate of return that the overall markets have had for the past um, about six years. So interesting to note. This is a, a clearly sustainable rate of return. Therefore, this is also a clearly sustainable rate of return. I would rather us stay in a sustainable channel than to see us blow out over the top, at which point you would have to start to become a little suspicious that perhaps we're getting a blow-off set of emotional buyers coming into the market that would overall create a technically weaker S&P than if we were to turn around here and spend uh, two, two and a half weeks uh, working our way back down to 2190 or so. I would much rather see that just for the health of the markets. So guys, I think that's about it. Um, the calls this week were, were, were pretty good. We uh, s spotted this broadening pattern and we were clear in, the, in, in mentioning that the broadening pattern is not a, is a reversal of uh, short term because it was only a, of about a five day pattern, but that is a reversal pattern. And we got the, the, re the reversal. And I even though we, we haven't, we're not much off the highs, um, it would not surprise me if this week we see this channel line break. It just wouldn't surprise me. Um, it doesn't have to, but I'm not going to be shocked if it does. Again, based upon this long-term resistance line. So, guys, there you have it. We are just uh, going to follow this with the thing in mind being that we are 
looking at that big inverted head and shoulders pattern as the wind in the sails of the bull's ship. I think the bulls have, have the deck stacked in their favor right now, and it would take some fairly serious selling pressure um, for me to change my mind on that. And, and I just, you know, we'll see. It, but it, it, it looks like we're pretty well set up here. So, that said, I want to thank you for taking time out of your Sunday evening to watch this. And as always, thank you for your very, very kind support. Take care.